Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. We are live in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2022, and we are in the Dell Technologies booth. Dan, the excitement. Everybody has drinks in hand. What are we doing? We're working, man. Yes. But if you look around, this place is buzzing, and it's the afternoon, and people are, you know, there's a few people enjoying a cocktail, a beer, a cocktail, a, a Red Bull sugar-free. I've asked for one of those. It hasn't shown up yet, but. Uh, it's at the hotel, I heard. But anyways, we'll get there. But the great part about the cloud is, you know, we've been tracking it for, since it was the cloud. It's 15 years old, and now we have the enterprise going to the cloud, the cloud going to the enterprise. I mean, just like we said it would a decade ago. Yeah, it's really moving along, and we're seeing that convergence. Everything that was, it's going to all be cloud is now like, nope, it's going to be hybrid, and everything that was like, it's going to be all on-prem is like, nope, it's going to be hybrid. And so I think we've landed there, and now we're really seeing the growth start to take shape. And we've got a great guest here today, Nick Brackney, a friend of ours from Twitter. Hey, yeah, I know. You know, I know. someone. Don't you love it when you have been interacting with somebody on Twitter for years and you finally meet them? You're kind of wondering what their reaction is going to be. Does their picture now, you have like an NFT or a cartoony type thing. I do, yeah. In here, so I actually didn't know what you looked like for real. Gotta spend the time on LinkedIn. There's the real photo, you know? I, I got you. I mean, LinkedIn is. Moving up, I mean, no longer for just job seekers. That's true. Well, I probably spent half my time on LinkedIn though. Now we could use this episode to talk about whether the NFT will ever make a comeback, but we're not, we're not going to do that, Nick. Um, and Nick from Dell that we happen to hang out with on Twitter, but Nick, how about a first and foremost, since I kind of gave you the Twitter intro, give us the real intro. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your role at Dell. Yeah, I've been about, I've been at Dell for about five years now and uh, bounced around, did some storage, did some cloud. Now I'm doing some cloud storage. Kind of funny how that Makes works sense. out. Makes you sense. know, the project Alpine where we're taking all of our, uh, our storage and we're making it software defined and we're putting it up into the various public clouds. So uh, it's been a great time. And before that, obviously, I spend a lot of time uh, working in cloud and other industries. I like that. Other industries, not Let's not talk about who we used to work for, but that's okay. It's all good. No, I mean, listen, uh, the cloud needs some help. And, and if you think about it, the cloud has technically been around for 15 years, yet, what, I mean, 10, 20, 25% of the data in the applications aren't in the public cloud. A lot of it is still on-prem, in colo, and in a very uh, grow, large and growing edge. So, first question is, big announcements this week. Let's talk to the audience about them. I know you love all your babies, but you can only pick a few. What will be your top storage announcements? So PowerFlex on AWS. So PowerFlex was already a software defined uh, piece of storage. Uh, what's really exciting about this is we're putting it up in AWS that allows customers to take advantage of uh, all that storage IP, the software that we've built over the years uh, in a new environment. So that's very exciting. So that's the big one. Yeah. What are the, uh, you know, talk a little bit about the advance, the capabilities that customers are going to be experiencing, why this is something that Dell is plowing ahead with. So I think one of the more interesting ones is the multi-availability zone uh, uh, architecture that is an option. And what's really interesting about that is that uh, it's an Amazon best practice, as you know, uh, to put your applications in multiple availability zones and have uh, right. more resiliency for your applications. We're doing that for the storage, so you can actually stripe it across. Uh, versus doing two different clusters and doing asynchronous replication. You can do that as well, but this allows you the opportunity to do either or. Yeah, the, um, is that, that better performance? Is it better reliability? What benefit does that provide? I think it's both and it could also help drive costs down. I mean, obviously there's still some challenges with egress, you know, that you run into, but- uh, Kind of. Egress, sometimes I hear from enterprises, it could be 50% of their compute cost. Yeah. But then you look at storage, and storage can also be quite ex uh, expensive as well. So storing in two different uh, clouds at the same time and you know having the synchronous re replication across is also a challenge. Yeah. So. so what's the experience like? So a lot of your customers, I mean, super experienced, PowerFlex on Dell infrastructure. How does that compare to the experience of PowerFlex on AWS? Does it look the same, smell the same, taste the same? It's a really good question. So we actually, for this version, we didn't have to change a single line of code. 
So all we had to do was we had to figure out what the underlying infrastructure was and provision on top of it because it's software defined. So uh, that allowed them to have the you know access to uh, something that they're already running in production in data centers today. Uh, very exciting stuff. Now there's a lot of different types of storage options in AWS, the same as there's a lot of storage op options with Dell infrastructure. Are there is there a particular kind of storage in AWS that you sit on top of? So yeah, it's interesting. There are two options. There's EC2 based and then there's EBS based. And so the difference there is uh, persistent versus non-persistent storage. So maybe I want to save some money and I want to you know throw uh, something up into the cloud, a workload. Maybe it's a dev test workload. I want to throw you know 5,000 cores against it, uh, see if I can break it. And then I want to bring it back down into my uh, data center where I may be running it in production. Uh, that might be something that's great for an EC2 based instance, right? Uh, because therefore you're not uh, having to pay the, more for the, uh, the, the EBS storage layer. Now, if I'm going to be using a database or an application and I'm, I'm going to be using that for a long period of time in Amazon, I probably want to choose the EBS option. So we had a conversation with uh, one of your colleagues, Varun Shabra, yeah. and uh, we talked a lot about kind of this, these forces that are bringing public to, to prem and prem to public. But you know, one of them is that Dell always has been a company that's led with meeting its customer, yeah. right? Where the customer is. So for Dell to make a decision to invest in, in, in working more closely with AWS and making an important part of its portfolio available, that must have been driven by that kind of customer demand. So talk a little bit about why and you know how you see this really driving growth for your portfolio. Sure. Uh, absolutely. And you know, uh, we hear this a lot. There's a lot of uh, rich, you know, da uh, enterprise data services uh, that customers rely on in their data centers today. Uh, they really needed to be able to access some of those capabilities that are more advanced uh, in the cloud. That, that's part of the reason why you might look to a third party versus a native solution. And so, uh, you know, PowerFlex was our first one out of the gate, and you know, people like a lot of the capabilities PowerFlex has. We're also, you know, taking a file to the cloud as well with PowerScale eventually, and we see a lot of demand there as well. So there's a lot of interest in our portfolio and all the storage IP. Most people don't realize, you know, something like 80% of our developers are actually software developers. No. Jeff Clark makes that very clear now every time he gets on stage, which I think was very important. And I have to tell you, uh, I know a lot of people look at Dell as an, an infrastructure only company, but with the amount of engineers and the amount of investments, uh, it is changing. And just the fact that you're putting your secret sauce software up on AWS, I think makes a big statement. Yeah. And I think it's great for customers because, you know, uh, there's a lot of challenges with moving and switching models. And, you know, yes, we're 15 years into cloud, but I still think it's relatively early in cloud. You know, it's just kind of crazy to say. Well, it is, Nick. And there's a reason why we're here 15 years later. Uh, and whether um, that was control, uh, whether that was latency, whether that was, I don't really want, I don't, I don't have a need to move it. Uh, we're in a much more, I'll call it the mature stage, right? Where, you know, maybe we're out of the adolescence years and we're into, into being teenagers, which means we haven't figured everything out. We've learned a lot of lessons, sometimes the hard way, a lot of hard lessons, but I think that's good in the end for customers because no longer is there this board mantra that says, thou shalt not invest anything unless it's the public cloud. And it's like, oh, interesting. If even going by the definition of cloud where it's uh, scalable, typically can function in a DevOps uh, environment, and you can probably swipe a credit card if you're a developer um, and it's using Linux open source tools. Hey, all those checks, the box, that kind of gets me. It's a long way to this question, by the way, which is how does this all play with Apex? How is how is what this what you're talking about here involved in this? There's a lot of great things that people loved about cloud, and when we looked at Apex, we said we have to bring those to the data center. Uh, where this aspect of Apex is going is that we also need to make sure we do the opposite. So bring the cloud to the data center, but then also bring the data center experience to the cloud, right? right. And, and so my focus in my work has been really on bringing the data center to the cloud. But you're absolutely right, the vision for Apex is 
you know, let people run it where it makes the most sense, right. you know, and, and the only way you can do that is if things are consistent. And if you're giving people that same great experience everywhere, because otherwise they have to make trade offs. And that's that's where we start getting into trouble. And, you know, like to your point, you said we used to hear a lot of different conversations getting out of the data center game and stuff like that. And I hear that a lot less now. I hear a lot more of a balanced really rational approach to how they're going to use cloud within their IT tool chest. Yeah, to me it's really interesting because it's it's like, a, you know, we always use like the baseball analogies and sometimes it's, you know, we're in the early innings and sometimes it's a, we're in the late innings. And I think every company's kind of on their own continuum right now. I think some companies got on board early. You're seeing some companies that got on board and now they're from on public cloud and they're pulling back. You see some that really never went and they're just kind of starting to tiptoe. and. You know, for you and for the Dell portfolio though, I smell so much opportunity to, you know, handle this extensibility because in the end, like I said, we said really early in the show, Nick, everyone agreed to hybrid, but the migration paths are going to be long because the thing is, it's not like we're in a stop setting. Like this is your infrastructure and architecture. Now you're going to, it's like every day it changes. The edge gets bigger, the telco cloud grows, your workloads in the cloud grow, your observability workloads change security needs are, are, are evolving. Yeah. So you're continuously putting the company in a good position to take advantage of that every day that IT people are trying to solve these problems. Sure, and, and you know when you think about it, cloud is just a feature, right? It, it's a different way of implementing or delivering that capability um, at the end of the day. And, and you know we've done a great job in the data center and the enterprise of uh, you know, getting ourselves into a great position and having the right software that these organizations rely on. And now we're going to be able to take it to the public cloud here and really make it you know, work anywhere. So Nick, congratulations on PowerFlex and AWS launch. Thank you. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. And I have to tell you, it's great to see you in person. And now, you know, let's just mix it up a little more on social media. I don't know, can we? Is that healthy? I don't know, but I have a lot of fun with it. My brain operates in 280 character uh, loads or whatever you want to call it. I'm so glad they moved off of 140. That was way too, that was way too short. It is. <laughs> you know what's funny though? I still struggle with 280. I just yeah. want to point that out. I struggle with 140. I struggle with, with 280. But you're very good. You're very good on socials. Good representative of Dell. Congratulations on all the launch and thanks for joining us on the 65 on the road at Dell at AWS reInvent. Yes. Take a breath. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate everybody tuning in to this episode. We had more from the event with Dell, so make sure you check out those other episodes. For this episode, though, it's time for Patrick, myself, and our guest, Nick, to say goodbye. So we'll see you later.